Decided to do it at some point. So it's I'm from Austria and Priscilla is from France. So one day we thought we could just, first it was just a joke, how oh, we could just walk from my place to her place, it's just over the Alps. And then one day we thought, oh, we could just really do it. because it was a really long day and we had to go up and down so much through so many different kind of landscape there was something like rocks and then snow and then grass and then rocks again and it was really long and really hard but I think because it was the beginning it went really well and seems easy because we're still really fresh and happy to do it So I knew the mountains where we had to walk in the first place because I've been hiking there a lot of times. So I knew it's going to be really long and hard because there was still some snow on the mountains. of South Tyrol. It was like really warm and we had the Italian flair but it still felt a little bit like home for me. Uh, 
And since in Italy there were not so many people hiking in this time of the year, we were really often uh, completely alone in the forests. Uh, we were not prepared or organized for this journey, I think, because we didn't plan in advance, we didn't think it through really. It was just, yeah, let's go from A to Z and in between we can stop on G and F and something, but we didn't really know much more. It was a day-to-day -day adventure more than a plan and long prepared trip. So really often we were completely alone somewhere in the mountain. We were sometimes hiking for a whole day without seeing anyone else. Which was nice for us because we knew we could just put the tent somewhere in a nice spot and we were not disturbing anyone or meeting anyone else. This journey was for us um, discovering each other's home and in both our cultures were not the same because we could clearly see it even though we were in the mountains and the few stops we had to make when we were in a village or the few stops we had to make when we were in a camping or when we were meeting people, it was really different from one country to the other one. take what we would need, what we could take, but we don't really need. And at the end we just came out with a nice balanced mix. So every evening we were more or less planning, okay, tomorrow we have to go in this direction, so we can take this mountain pass to come into this valley, then we can maybe follow this mountain ridge, so we come into this valley, then we can go up to this mountain. So we were planning two to three days ahead a little bit. Actually, there was few favorite parts in the journey. There's these small days where you're finally seeing that you reach a goal you put yourselves. Or finding something unexpected on the way and that makes you really happy somehow. And it, it was yeah, there is many nice moments in this journey and it's, it was just yeah, a lot of reaching steps or finding out something nicer. So the longer we were walking on our trip, the more we could see that not only the landscape is changing, but also the culture we are walking through. So you could really see that we are really going away from the Austrian part of the Alps and coming closer to France. Uh, 
Uh, the hardest I found in this journey was just to walk on the road sometime because sometimes we did not have a choice at all. Um, there was no biking lane, no path, no pedestrian way, uh, there was no sidewalk either, so sometimes we really had no other choice than to walk on the road. We arrived there and the first nights we spent in Switzerland we had a huge storm above our heads. We were only three days in Switzerland and the first day we slept just under a pass and we actually barely slept because we had thunderstorm and huge lightning all night, uh, heavy rain, we actually woke up there was a little bit of snow next to the tent so it was really not comfortable to be there and we had to wait a little bit for the storm to pass and the rain to come down and we were like okay let's go down the mountain but we got actually caught by the by the storm again while going down it was so much rain that there were actually some small rivers that got created all along the path we got our shoes soaked and our trousers completely soaked too we were completely wet from hair to toes Everything was wet, everything was just dirty and it was really not nice and cold and heavily raining. So after this stormy day in the mountain, we arrived at Lago Maggiore with all our stuff completely soaked. And we were walking in shoes full of water, all our equipment, all our clothes were really wet and uncomfortable. We just had a few hours of sun that we used to dry all our stuff in the sun and just relax and it felt so good. I knew it's going to be hard, not only because it's going to be a lot of walking and long days all the time, but also because after every day you still know you have so much ahead of you. So you really have to think in small steps and say, say to yourself, okay, I make it today to here. Especially if you think, okay, I've already went, I've already hiked for so many days and we went so far and you're still much, much more ahead. I always thought it's going to be really hard just to motivate ourselves every day again to keep walking and hike some more.
just looking at the map we had on the phone and just deciding oh this path looks nicer than this one and this mountain could look nice so let's just cross it we had no idea what the landscape was going to look like and we had no idea of anything we just look on the phone looked what the path looked like a little bit how many meters up and down we would have to do and what was the most efficient way to do it and that that's how we planned it Uh, to find somewhere to sleep was most of the time easy. It was either we found a camping because we needed a shower or we slept in the mountain and we found somewhere quiet to go and just put the tent where it was not going to bother anyone. It was not a national park or someone's property or something and we usually just put the tent there. friends and we were we were just going on top of a mountain and all of a sudden we had the view on the valley and we knew that at the end of the valley was the French Alps and it was it was an incredible feeling it was the idea of we're finally getting there Like the first day we saw Val d'Aost, that means that at the end of this Val there was friends and the end of the journey and everything. The most important thing we had about food was our savior energy refilling, consisting in condensed milk and M&M's. And that's what kept us on going. So for the last days in France, we planned a big mountain trip because we really wanted to stay just on mountain tops for the whole time. It was also going to be about a week. And when we then bought all the food and prepared for this last part of the journey, we could feel it in our backpacks that it's really a lot of weight we have to carry with us.
So when we finally arrived at the French border, it was so windy and so cold all of a sudden that we didn't really have time to celebrate the moment. We just tried to get off the pass as quick as possible. Arriving in France was actually really crazy because it was all of a sudden knowing the place where you've been once and then being like, oh, I know also this one and then I was like, oh, that's crazy, I've been there once and it's just the idea of actually, yes, walking from a country I didn't know so much, arriving in my country that I knew and I had places I've been to. Everything is so familiar and everything seems so beautiful again, it was just discovering again my Alps, it was just being there, being in the mountains, being, being home. So the last days in France could have gone way faster than we did because from the border to Albertville it could have been shorter in days because we could have made it more straight but because we wanted to make it really nice and finish this journey properly we decided to go through more mountain paths or more mountain areas than usually like this this part of the journey would have been in the middle of the journey we would probably not have spent so much time in the mountains <laughs>
Towards the end, we decided to lose of this efficiency part and take more of pleasure to walk around and take some nice summits and just do it nicely and even though it would take a bit more time. So the last day of our journey was, I think, one of my favorite days of our whole trip. We were going over a top called La Grande Journée, which means the great day or the long day. It was a really, really long day. We were sleeping in our tent like a few hours under the summit the day before. So in the morning we could wake up with a view on the sunset over the Mont Blanc and then just go up to the summit.
we could already see Albarin all gone, because he was so happy to be so close. But on the other hand, we knew we have to follow a really long mountain ridge down and go like 2,000 meters down all the way over all these ridges and small passes. But we could already see our goal, which kept our spirits really high. Anyway, so yeah, we're home. Okay, what do we eat tonight?